Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining the fourth webinar in our series, Being Black in STEM, Insights on Higher Education. Today, we are joined by Rafia and Agogo, who are both undergraduates in the Department of Chemical Engineering at Imperial College London. They'll be sharing their insights into the university experience, both studying and extracurriculars. There'll be time for questions at the end of the session. So if there's something you'd like to ask, just pop it in the chat box and we'll come back to it at the end. And with that, I'll hand over to Rafia and Agogo. Hi everyone, I'm Raphael. And I'm Agogo. And we're here to speak to you about the university experience, so especially contact hours, extracurricular activities, and our tips for success. So um, we're just gonna start at the very beginning. So like, you know, when we applied to Imperial, you know, the entry requirements that we had and um, what it was like to receive our offer. So um, I did Scottish system, so I did advanced hires in Scotland, and my requirements were two A1s and an A um, to get into Imperial and Raphael. And I did A-levels, and my um, grade requirements were three A-stars, so three A-stars in chemistry, maths, and further maths, and obviously that changes for you depending on what subjects you do. Um, so starting from the beginning, I was in year 13, knowing I wanted to do chemical engineering. So I did some research on universities in the UK. And so that's Imperial was a top, um, a top university, which was really appealing to me. And um, so with that, I did some research so that I liked the structure. Um, I was invited, applied through UCAS um, with a personal statement. I'm sure Google, you did the same, you had the same process, right? Yeah. yeah. And then um, I had an interview. So what was really nice was that during the interview process, I got to meet a member of staff who would be supporting me through my first year. And during the interview, mm -hmm. I was asked questions based on my personal statement and also some technical questions for chemistry and maths. Yeah, and my process was pretty much the same. Um, I uh, submitted my application pretty much like just before the deadline, like I think it was end of December, first week of January, because that's the type of, type of person I was back then. But um, yeah, so I met um, a member of staff who took my interview and he asked me questions that were based on physics and um, chemistry. So yeah, when you're doing your interview, just try and look over the basics of, you know, the three or four subjects that you're taking. Yes, and don't worry too much about it because it's generally content that you would be, you would have studied um, during A-levels. So just being able to apply your knowledge is really good, but we'll speak more about that later in the presentation. So we, after results day, um, my after results day, on the same day, I got uh, my offer to start at Imperial. And from then on, you start getting emails on how to set up um, your university accounts and also information on um, what to do next. Yeah, so yeah, my yeah. results day was actually a week before um, A-level results day. So I actually had to wait a week um, not knowing whether I was going to Imperial or my second choice, which was quite nerve wracking. But, you know, um, <laughs> thankfully, I got into Imperial. But yeah, so we got some information about emails and stuff like that. And then um, when it comes to meeting new people um, that are going to your university, social media is your best friend. Um, specifically, Facebook, like everything is on Facebook. Um, all the groups, all the um, different groups for your department, for societies, you will look for them on Facebook and you can join them there and join group chats there. Yeah, and for us, because we started in 2017 and graduated in 2021, you go onto Facebook and already you see Chemical Engineering Class of 2021, um, CGCU, which is um, the General Engineering Department and Imperial Class of 2021, maybe um, your Halls Class of 2021. So there's, it's an opportunity to meet people that are joining and would really advise you to make use of social media. That's how Agoga and I met. So um, I had joined the chemical engineering group chat on WhatsApp and also the ACS, we'll talk about ACS, the society that we're both involved in later on in our presentation. And I remember um, on the day, on the ACS group chat, somebody must have, we're all talking like we had already known each other, which was really calming. And then somebody must have asked um, um, what course does everyone do? And I saw a go-go say chemical engineering. Quickly, I ran to private message her. Oh yeah, hi, I'm Rafia. You just need to be confident with these things. So that was using WhatsApp. But um, you'd be thinking, oh, Facebook, I don't really use Facebook. But this is really, really important that um, you'd have a Facebook account because most of your group work, even when you join university, would be on there. Yeah, and as Rafia said, she messaged me on WhatsApp and I was so happy to receive a message from her because 
you know, coming from Scotland, I didn't know anybody in London. So it was when um, we started speaking to each other, it calmed me down a little bit going, okay, so when I go to London, I'll know somebody. And, you know, you can, it's a really good way to just like, you know, initially meet people on your course that are in similar sizes, societies to you or ones that you're interested in. So yeah, it's a great, it's a great thing. On a little less exciting note, um, we did get a maths problem sheet to do before uni started. Yes, and um, you'd be shocked and think, okay, maybe um, they're not going to follow up on this, but we advise you to do that problem sheet because everybody's going to have done the problem sheet. And it's also a very good way for you to know what level you're at and what level they expect you to be at. So like with, with maths, what level they expect you to be at um, before lectures start. And I'm sure we had a maths test in the first week or so. It wasn't too bad, yeah. I think it was... I think it was a maths test. Yeah, I think we did. We had a, a maths test on the first week of term. Yeah. So yeah, definitely do that maths problem sheet. Yeah, but I don't don't listen to us say this and be worried. Like it's things that you can do. It's, they're not trying to um, grade you on university level stuff. So it's things that you study during A levels. Um, then in the first week we had a freshers week at Imperial. It's called Welcome Week. Yeah, so on that first week, there's so much going on from freshers events, freshers fair, intro talks, you know, intro introductions to your department, to different societies, um, sports trials, like so much is going on in that first week. And I literally would advise everybody to take us, take part in as much as they can in that first week, um, because it's probably like the most amount of free time you're going to have whilst at Imperial. But yeah, there's so much going on. Yes, yeah, so um, some of the freshers events that we had were parties in the um, in one of the accommodations near, um, so in Bite Hall, so I'm sure you've heard of it if you've researched Imperial. We also had um, our freshers fair where you have access to the different societies and you really see how, um, how um, much student-led opportunities there are at um, Imperial. And the freshers fair, when I say you, you're encouraged to go sign up, because as Agogo said, this is um, one of the only times that you have this much free time. So make use of your free time. Don't be worried about signing up to too many activities because then you can um, filter them out and um, withdraw from some of them or unsubscribe from their emails later on. But um, the Freshers Fair is really good. Um, there's loads of freebies. I would say bring a bag, but you probably get a free bag too. Yeah. Yeah, so um, also in that first week, your department will host intro talks to the library so you know how to get to use, get used to the library system, um, you know, get used to like the referencing, which you will definitely need further on in your degree. Um, you get talks about fire safety and all that kind of good stuff. So all of those kind of intro talks. Um, my first impressions of when I came to Imperial was just like, wow, um, everything was just so different to what I was used to from back home. Like um, there were so many different kinds of people, like, and I just wasn't used to seeing like that range of like different types of people. So it was really, it was really cool. I was so excited. Um, I don't really remember my first impressions, but I remember how I felt. Um, I felt really happy and shocked at the same time because you usually have that stereotype that, okay, if you're going to a top university, everyone's going to be a nerd. It's the only book that everybody's doing, but there's sports um, activities and also meeting people like Agogo early on made sure that I was more confident to make new friends and everybody, everybody on campus is friendly. So it was um, usually think, okay, university, everyone's on their own. But when I tell you the sports system's crazy. Yes, yeah, so next thing we're going to talk about is accommodation. Um, so I lived in student accommodation on campus. So the, and it was called, it was one of the East Side Halls. And it's basically like, I would say three to five minutes away from um, the main college. And Rafia actually lived at home. Yes, yes, yes. I lived at home. And um, although it wasn't bad, but then the days where you have long days, I used to be jealous of a girl because we just say bye. And before you get to the South Kensington station, a girl was already at home. She's removed her shoes. But um, yeah, we'll talk to you about, okay, the differences between living in, um, the differences with, between living in halls and living at home. Yeah, so in halls, especially during that first week, um, there were so many different events that were organized by the hall seniors um you know from there was like indian night for like indian cu cuisine and uh, we went bowling one time um on that first the very very first night there was um a hall party i mean this was all pre-covid by the way so oh, yeah. <laughs> 
yeah so um but yeah there was a whole party where there was like um each floor had a different theme and each floor was making different cocktails to do with that theme and it was like playing different music and it was just such a great way to like meet people that are in the same building as you literally I met so many different people that night probably can't remember half of them but like literally it was just a great way to meet people um and living at home so not living near campus meant that I had to commute to uni so I used transport for London for that and I paid monthly travel cards which were at least 90 pounds they increase every year but not that, that much because the, the smallest amount that I've paid is 90 pounds per month um although I would encourage you to go to halls if you have the opportunity to um I would, I would like to reassure you that living at home, you don't really miss out much. What I would say is that you obviously have to make the extra effort to make sure you make friends, which is what I did with the group chat and messaging a go-go. Um, with that, you, you, have the, um, you can still have the experience of, okay, going to see your friends in halls and also going to events and meeting up with um, your friends within halls. So there's not much to miss, but um, you just have, to, I'd like you to take note that you have to make extra efforts to make friends and which shouldn't be hard everybody wants to make friends and at imperial once you've gotten your offer you get sent a form where you choose um your five the five halls that you'd like to stay in and they're not done in order of preference so you have halls near university like a halls where okay yes they cost more but you don't have to commute and then you have halls about 40 minutes away from campus where um yes they're cheaper but then you'd have to pay for transport so it's kind of a balance between both yeah so there was only on that form there was only um three halls that are on campus and then all other ones you have to commute um so I just put the three um that were close to campus and I just chose two other random ones didn't really research them and I just like hoped that I got the ones near campus and I did yeah and some of the halls are they're really nice um I remember yeah. Agogo's floor Agogo's floor had about 14 people and that shouldn't even alarm you because they all had their own bathrooms but their kitchen was huge and then your kitchen used to get cleaned regularly didn't you? yeah my kitchen kitchen was cleaned every day um we had cleaners come into our rooms to clean our rooms every month um so you might be sharing with like a lot of people but you don't really feel it because you know it's cleaned regularly yeah, and then you guys have convenience stores and gyms. I know there's a gym yeah. in the North Acton. Yeah. So um, a typical day at Imperial, because we did come to study. Um, <laughs> normally you would have lectures. You either have lectures in the morning or afternoon. And then the, the, in the slots where you don't have lectures, you'd have group work. So labs and those usually run for three hours. So our lectures are usually three to four hours a day. Then you have labs or group work, which are three hours. And in your first year, you have tutorials. However, your contact hours um, reduce as you go, as you progress on through your degree. But um, I'd make it known that it doesn't mean you have more free time. It just means you have to organize your time more. You have a lot more course, coursework to do, which are weighted higher. Yeah, so as Rafia said, um, we have, usually have like one hour tutorials every single day. And each tutorial is to do with a different one of your modules. And basically they're just, um, they have supplementary questions to what you covered in class to help you with your understanding of the material. And if you're struggling with anything, then generally you can ask your tutor um, any of the questions and they will help you. Um, we, um, Imperial also has different... Um, resources when it comes to learning. For example, there's Blackboard, which is the portal where lecturers post all their lectures and the um, tutorial sheets. And then there's also Panopto that can be used to um, watch back the lectures that maybe you missed, not because you were laying in bed and you couldn't be bothered, but maybe if you were ill one day or if, um, I don't know, you missed 10 minutes of the lecture, you can go back to the recording and rewatch it. Yeah, and the tutorials are normally done in smaller groups. So if you're too shy to ask questions in lectures, you always have an opportunity to ask during tutorials. And they're led by PhD students. So um, students that have been through and done the, the modules that they're teaching. Um, I also wanted to make it known that tutorials only happen in first year. So where you'd need a, a bit more support in transitioning to uni. And in second, third and fourth year, they are substituted by problem classes within your lectures. So lectures will make time to go through questions um, based on the content that they're teaching. Um, we've been, we've had the opportunity to take on many projects during our degree. There's at least two big projects a year. In first year, before, like I hadn't been in uni for two months and I really started my first project, which was a design project where we had to design a heat exchanger. So mm -hmm. things like that give you the opportunity to meet people in your course and also to um, take initiative and also um, almost be resourceful. 
Yeah, so I remember that first project. Um, I can't lie, I didn't really understand what was going on, especially at the beginning. But it's a good project to introduce you to what like chemical engineering is like or what the rest of your projects in your degree will be like. Um, you know, we also had seven weeks of labs in first year, I think it was. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was a really long um, yes. lab <laughs> session in first year. But I mean, it's great because it gave you some like really good experience of what it's like to be in a lab, to work in a lab that kind of thing and then we also have a carbon capture pilot plant which is um, a great facility that we have at imperial in the chemical engineering department and in second year we had a project where we worked on there yes and the seven weeks of lab might seem very long but then we had the opportunity to take on different projects um i think every two weeks or so yeah so, um it was it was very interesting and as agogo said we had the ideal opportunity of at a very early stage in our um degree operating our pilot plant So yeah, as we talked about, you can see the pilot plan on the bottom picture there, um, which is just a great state of the art, I feel, facility that Imperial, that yes. Imperial does have. Um, it really gives you a feel of what working on like, you know, a refinery or a plant would be like. Um, some other things that you get with the department, you get lab gear, um, you know, and you also get lockers. And the lockers are, you pay, I think it was five pounds you paid for the lockers. And um, in there, you can store anything that you like. So for me, I would always store my lab gear in there so I wouldn't have to, you know, keep carrying them back and forth. Um, yeah. Yeah, like a go-go, I also stored my lab gear in my locker. So that would be our lab coats and our glasses, lab glasses. And in your first year as well, you have the opportunity to um, give uh, deposits. At, at, during our time, 2017, we, the deposit was 100 pounds yeah. um, for laptops. So at the end of your degree, you either keep the laptop and they keep your deposit or you return the laptop and get your hundred pounds back. So um, the laptops are a very good opportunity because beforehand they tell you, okay, what devices you need. You're going to be doing a lot of programming. Um, the laptop is very good to have, especially when you're watching lectures that you've missed, not on purpose. Um, there's, other, there's also facilities within the department and within the university. In the department, we have study rooms which is a good addition such because times when, okay, the library is full or you don't want to walk all the way to the library or you're doing group work within chemical engineering, you can go to the study rooms. We've got about three in the department and um, you can also book study rooms in the library as well. Yeah, so the library yeah. is great. Um, you can borrow textbooks there. There are also like, um, you can also get digital textbooks from the library. So if you don't want to be carrying out, carrying around a lot of books, there's quite a lot of the books are digitally available. Um, in the library, you can also hire laptops and iPads. So if for whatever reason you forgot your laptop at home or you don't have one, you can, you can hire one at the library. And I think you can keep it for 24 hours. I think that's yeah. the longest you can keep it before you have to put it back. Um, yeah. And just to go over, the department has uh, quite a few events um, and it's basically just to help, you know, it can be quite um, study heavy and intense sometimes so these events are really nice and um, the events include like career talks pancake day wine and cheese tasting there was dog petting there was um cookies and milk you know there's a range of different kind of events yes and even within the department i forgot to mention that we've got a chill room as well and i know we had um i don't know what the game is but you know the um, ta table football table yeah football. we had a table football um in, in this uh, in the chill room so yeah um these these department events are usually held by the chemical engineering society we also have departmental trips so we've um previously had the opportunity to go to the exxon mobile refinery so these are more um, formal ones and also informal ones like a trip to kew gardens which i know is being um arranged at the moment we also have the opportunity to go ice skating. So this is um, a time where you just get to know people, not only within your year, but in the um, older years or other years. So there's usually an ice skating rink that's set up in front of the Natural History Museum. We have an opportunity yeah. to do that during the, towards the end of the year, so like around Christmas time. So um, a big part of our university experience has been clubs and societies, and we'll get on to why. Um, it's really important for you to um, be part of any club or society, not only to make sure that you're a well-rounded individual, but it's also because um, if you just spend all your time studying, it's not really good for you. So Agoga and I hadn't done rock climbing in a while, and we realized that we had the opportunity to do this by going to Ethos, which is a sports, cent sports center on campus. And we even had the opportunity to um, be trained to be able to 
do rock climbing on our own. So like unsupervised, which was really cool. Yeah, and because we're yeah. chemical engineering students, we are part of the Chemin Society. And we also joined the ACS, which is the Afro-Caribbean Society. And the Afro-Caribbean Society has so many different kinds of events going on. So the first event is usually the meet and greet where you basically meet um, other people part of the society in your year group and also in older years. And um, it's really important that you meet people in older years and it can be super beneficial to you. And when it comes to coursework, exams, just getting materials. So it's just a great way to meet people. Uh, the ACS also put on dance workshops, the career talks, the AGM, which is the annual general meeting where you like elect the new, um, the new committee members. And then there's also an event called Impulse, which is held across all the London universities. So all London ACSs attend this one event. So you can also meet people from other universities as well. Yes, I think that's a perk of really being um, in a university at London. You usually have events where um, events that span across the different London universities. So you have the opportunity to build your network. Uh, Impulse. Impulse has always been a good event because you usually have um, artists come in to perform. And during the AGM, like Agogo mentioned, you can vote in new um, committee members and you can also choose to run for a position. The meet and greet, I remember our meet and greet, that's the picture at the bottom right. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. The meet and greet was really, really nice. We had opportunity to um, meet all the years, as Ogogo said, and also play games. So it was a very relaxed environment before you even go into university. And although Imperial has many, many clubs and societies, if you feel there's one that you want to start up, you're free to. Um, we have friends who have, who start, I think it was last session, that they started up um, Hip Hop Society, which was really, really cool. So um, one of the main events at the ACS is the Afro Gala Society. And for both me and Rafia, this is probably where the majority of our free time went to. Um, but the Afro Gala is, the, is our annual cultural showcase of dance, drama, and music. And it is entirely student led. So everything in it from the lights to the acting, to the script writing, to the costume design, it's all led by students. Yes, um, and to give you an idea of the scale of it, we usually have, last year, we had about 75 cast members and we were performing to an audience of over 650 individuals. So Afro Gala is done under the um, Afro Caribbean Society and we've had the opportunity to take on different roles. In first year, I was, I just used to follow a go -go and my other friends to practice because I wasn't really a dancer or anyone to be on stage and um, just being at the, just being at the rehearsals, I found that I could, okay, contribute by, by, by arranging the backstage operations. Um, then in my second year, I became the stage manager. In my third year, I ran for and was elected as the Afro Gala coordinator. Yeah, so in my first year, I was mainly a dancer. Like I pretty much was part of every single type of dance there was. Um, in second year, I was in charge of the sound and lighting. And then in third year, I was in charge of like all the behind the scenes stuff. So sounds, lighting, props, backstage, um, set design, all that kind of stuff. Yes, and whilst you're engaging in Afro Gala, Afro Gala takes a lot um, of preparation. So we usually start in October for a show that's um, done in February. Thankfully this year it was before lockdown. So all of our efforts didn't go in, in vain. Um, so, this is all happening whilst you're pursuing your degree in chemical engineering and it's quite a uh, um, work like there's a lot of the workload with chemical engineering so you need to be able to schedule your time and also realize that sometimes you have to give up some of your free time but with afro gala yes you're using your free time to um to arrange the show and everything but you're enjoying yourself because you're doing it with your friends so it's really nice to have um you have communities within the society so it's not it's not a burden it's something that you want to do you you're never forced to do it anyway um, at, the, at the end of Afro Gala, we had a performance dinner. Yeah, so um, we're just going to play a little clip of what Afro Gala is like. So this was from last year, the one that Agogo and I were on.
yeah, so as you can see, there's dance, drama, music. Um, we also had a band that I'm sure you'd be able to see on the bottom left. Um, so I forgot that's such a big production. So there's always going to be a way that you can contribute to it. Even if you don't want to be on stage, you could do logistics, um, sorting out the tickets. And like Agogo said, everything is entirely student led. So looking for funding, um, arranging the bookings of the venues, after parties and everything. everything. <laughs> So now we're just going to go on to some tips for success um, whilst doing your A-level exams and exams in general, to be honest. And um, me and Rafi have quite different, <laughs> different <laughs> opinions on this. And that's OK, because people yeah. do have different methods of studying. Um, I think one thing that we both agree on is the need for good notes. Like if you're writing good notes, make good notes. Generally, you're setting yourself on the right path. Um, yes, yeah, so as I Google mentioned, like we have quite different um, ideas on this. Um, I'm a person who loves to study, so you need to start study. Left to me, you start studying from the beginning, from the first week of, um, from first week I start A level, so year 12. Um, this just, I, th I feel this is very necessary because um, you go to university where a lot of work is required of you. So it's less of a burden or it's less um, stressful if it's something that you're very used to. Or yes, as Agogo said, it's very, very essential for you to make good notes, not just to accept the notes of your teachers, because um, it really, how do I say, you're very sure that you understand um, the content when you've made your own notes. And when you do extra practice, like exam papers and textbook questions, so being resourceful and looking for those, um, looking for those extra materials you're on your own. Yeah, I take a more relaxed approach when it comes to studying, especially during my advanced hires, which is the equivalent of A levels. I was very much a person that would just not leave it to last minute, but just leave it closer to the time of the exam. But um, <laughs> but usually um, the practice, you know, I was really good at like finding um, past papers dating back to even 2003. I'd find them, I would do those questions that were relevant to the um, course that I was doing. And um, so that really, really helped me. And another tip that we will try and say is that try and become on the day of the exam, we know it's hard and we know that you're full of nerves, but honestly being calm helps you so much. It helps you to be able to think through the questions that you're reading as well. And don't forget to eat well, eat well and sleep well and look after yourself. You know, exam season can be quite stressful, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't look after yourself. Yeah, and looking after yourself is something that you should do like from A-levels to universities, even after you graduate. It's just, um, you can't really succeed if you're not um, at inner peace. So. Um, would say that that's very important. It's also very useful to ask your teachers questions. Your teachers are always willing to teach you um, and you should not You should never be shy. Use the resources around you, so not just textbook, but also asking your teachers. At university, the one point that Gogo and I agree on is to attend your lectures. You'd find that Imperial um, has Panopto, which is the system that Gogo mentioned earlier where you can watch recorded lectures. Most, most of the time, if you're missing your lectures, you're probably not doing anything useful at the time. So then you find that you're using your spare time to then rewatch lectures, time that you could be using to consolidate your knowledge. Yeah, so in addition to that, I would say do your tutorial sheets. Um, they're a really, really good way for you to be able to track um, your knowledge to make sure that you understand the material. Um, and it's only by doing the tutorial sheets that you can actually figure out what the gaps in your knowledge are and be able to ask the right questions to the, either the tutor or the lecturer. Um, and massive, massive, massive point, schedule your time. We've mentioned it before, but we're gonna say it again, like it's really important while you're at university to get used to scheduling your time. Yes, because um, we're saying that you can't come to university just to study. You need to be part of societies and other things outside of um, your department, but, obviously it was very important for you to schedule your time. And as Agogo said with the tutorial sheets, they're also very, very useful because then you become very familiar with answering questions during the exams. So just for exams won't be the first time that you're applying your knowledge. And another important point will be to get familiar with your course mates. So build your network within the department because a lot of people have access to resources that will be very, very useful to you. Yeah, and also do something other than study. As me and Rafia, we were part of the ACS. We did rock climbing, 
find something that you enjoy and that's not related to your degree or just something that you find fun and you know schedule some time to you know maybe one hour a day or if it's three hours a week and um, schedule and um, put that in your diary and just do it like have fun and don't think about you know your course and I guess this leads quite on nicely to the next point which you know it helps to give you something else to talk about especially when you're doing interviews and you're applying for um, internships or grad jobs or spring weeks um, usually they want to see what you're like as an actual person um, if you spend all your time studying, then you don't get, you know, these extracurricular experiences that make you very um, well-rounded. Yes, and at, um, during our first year, a lot happens in October. We had a careers fair and you think it's too early for you. It's never too early. Attend these careers fairs because it's a way to really open your mind to the opportunities out there. There's some, there's some job roles that I never thought I'd be able to apply engineering to and some job roles that I didn't know about. So you have, um, you have good exposure because Imperial runs these careers fairs a few times a year. You have exposure to leading companies and you know, okay, what they require and then you can tailor your experiences to that. You should also make sure that you're getting advice from older years and personal tutors because they've gone through it and they can give you um, very, they, they've got very um, relevant experience. Yeah, and another tip I would say is just apply. Don't think that um, you're not qualified enough or you're not good enough. Um, just apply for the spring weeks, the internships, the graduate jobs, whatever stage you're at, because it's people just like you that are applying for these things. I remember in when I was in second year, I definitely didn't feel like I was good enough for like spring weeks. I just saw everyone who, who was getting spring weeks are just above me. But you know, I just applied to one and I and I got the one that I applied to. So yeah, just apply. I don't feel don't feel any type of way about it. You never know. And also don't leave applications to your last year of study because you know even in first year if you apply and you don't get anything at least you're then used to what the you're used to what the, the experience is like you're used to the process so you know come second year you're now more prepared you know what's expected of you um and yeah yes um like you miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't take so you find that by applying like agogo has said that you improve like there's no at any point in your um journey for looking for a job you always look back and be like oh my god i can't believe i sent that cover letter so don't always don't ever be scared that okay i'm not good enough um it's good to grab hold of opportunities and the earlier you start applying the more you learn especially from feedback because a lot of these companies do give feedback yeah, so that's the end of our presentation. And we're happy, Ago and I are happy to answer any questions that you've got related to what we've spoken about or things even outside of what we've spoken about. Thank you both so much, Rafia and Agogo. That was a really good presentation, really interesting. And I think one of the main things that I'll take away from that and, and hopefully others, others will is that it really is worth reaching out to people, you know, before you even begin university. As you've shown, you know, you've had a friendship for such a long time because of meeting in a group, you know, before you even started. So I think that's really nice. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for sharing all that experience. Um, as um, Rafia mentioned, if you would like to ask a question, please do pop it in the chat box and we'll come back to it. We have had one on um, entry requirements for Scottish applicants for 2021 entry. Um, and what I would say to that is just check out the Imperial Study website because all the grade requirements will be listed on there. So that will probably be the most accurate place um, to find them. Um, I'm gonna, if I could... Oh, sorry, go on. I was going to say, I could add to that. Um, I'm, I haven't checked the website in a long time, so I'm not sure what's on there. So definitely check. But especially when I was applying, they didn't actually have Scottish requirements on their website. Um, so one thing that you can do is actually email into the department and ask um, what, you know, what requirements would look like for somebody like you. That is really good advice there. Thank you. Really good to have you in here as well, coming from that kind of Scottish, Scottish education background. So yeah, perfect. Thanks for that. Um, I'm going to jump in and ask a question of you both. Um, you know, you've given a lot of kind of insight into your experience and the, the tips that you've got, you know, based on studying at Imperial. I wonder whether there's like, if you could think of like one thing that you you've learned during that first year at university that you really wish you'd known when you started, like, what would that be? Um, I think mine would be, uh, be flexible, especially with um, my study methods 
and just with the way I plan my time um because from school I was pretty much used to like a certain way of studying and a certain way of doing things and it wasn't until like halfway through first year that I sort of like you know accepted the fact that I had to be sex um flexible so that's one thing I would say is like be open to new ways of studying um don't always assume that what worked for you in school is going to work for you in uni um yeah so just be open to new ways yeah and for me we mentioned the points about growing um your network not not just outside of your department, but especially within your department. That's something that I didn't know the importance of until second year when I had met a few people through group projects. So knowing um, loads of these people within the department in my first year would have helped a lot with modules that I might have been struggling with at the time. Cool, thank you both. Um, and uh, another question is, um, you know, you kind of mentioned that obviously things are like a little bit different this year because of um, COVID-19. I wonder whether you could talk a bit about what the experience of coming back to uni has been like now that, you know, studying and socialising is all remote. Um, yes, the experience has definitely been very different. However, it hasn't been, um, nothing negative has come out of it. Um, we're still able to there's a lot of information that's been spread out to us or sent out to us during the summer before our fourth year because the department knows as well as it being something new for them it's also new for the students so a lot of um a lot of meetings were set out set on teams during the summer to just update us on what would change now we have our, lect our lectures online so they're still done live on microsoft teams and you're still able to discuss oh we we didn't mention but on blackboard which is the um the portal that we use for our education you have the you have a feature in there which is like a discussion discussion board where you could ask questions so that is still very very interactive and we still have things like personal tutorials all done online yeah um aside from the academic part socially um i feel like yeah socially you're not able to meet as many people um face to face but i guess it goes back to the importance of you know using the social media um to your advantage really connecting with people on your course um, yeah, I guess I speak to a lot of my friends over FaceTime nowadays. Um, but yeah, it's just using, you know, the social medias and the different streaming platforms as well to interact with people. Yeah, and the department has really used, I just want to make, uh, make it known that the department through the Cambridge Society, they're also using these social media sites um, to make sure that they're still carrying on social events. So I'm not sure if anyone knows the game Among Us. So that's been, um, a server has been made for people within the department to be able to play that and also get to know each other so the first years who haven't um obviously who weren't with us um pre-covid are still able to interact with older years through that and many other events great thank you both and i i've actually learned something else today as well i didn't know what among us was i'd heard the name and now i know <laughs> so if someone mentions it i'll have an idea um thinking about you talked a little bit about you know the lab work that you get to do what kind of experiments and projects do you get to do in those labs? And is it quite different from the things that you did at A-level? Yes, it's, um, it's very different because with A-levels, you're usually given instructions and you're having to um, analyze results, which is, um, so in university, you're also analyzing results where you're kind of making up your own experiment. You're being given a brief of what's expected of you. So in my second year, I did an experiment synthesizing methyl acetate, so from methanol and acetic acid. So we're able to um, investigate the experience under different conditions. So being able to use real equipment like a fixed bed reactor, um, also creating catalyst, catalyst, catalyst beds. Um, and in my third year, I did an experiment on crystallization. Yeah, in my second year, my, pro my lab project was about um, water softening optimization. Um, yeah, so, and one thing I would say about the lab projects in uni is it's very much, you're leading it kind of by yourself. So, you know, you have, it gives you a brief, you know, you know your end goal, but you're, you kind of need to plan how you're going to get there, um, which I felt was quite different. And also you're doing these things in groups of usually around three or four people. Um, so you need to learn how to like, you know, navigate the lab in a group and, you know, making sure everybody has their own responsibility. And in my third year, my um, project was about synthesizing um, biodiesel, basically, and just trying to make it more environmentally friendly. Yeah, and another bit that I would say would be different from sixth form is that, yes, Agogo said, you're, it's entirely, okay, student-led and also direct, um, directing your 
doubting your findings yourself. But um, I forgot what I wanted to say. Um, yeah, you create a report at the end of the at the end of your project, and also you have to do a presentation, which we didn't do, which I didn't do at six one. Cool, that's really useful. Thank you both. Uh, and then thinking more broadly about you know chemical engineering as a topic, um, is there is there like a, a subject that you've studied that's been your favorite so far? Um, I would say probably my favorite subject at university has been fluid mechanics so far, um, mainly just because it's always been good to me, like fluid mechanics. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I would say mainly because I found it quite interesting, you know, learning about how um, in fluids such as like air and liquids in general, how they interact with each other and how they actually flow. And, you know, the different forces and the different sort of mathematical constructs that are responsible for the different types of flow of different types of fluids. Yes, and I would I would have said fluid mechanics if I go good and say so. I'm going to say um, separation processes. So you apply okay the phenomenon phenomena in um, fluid mechanics, and it's also very um, the information that you learn is very applicable into the manufacturing industry. So to see how process streams are separated and how you get purity and um, the things that you usually have to compromise in order to achieve that. Great, thank you both. And um, we've had another question on the chat. Were there any other Scottish undergrads during your time at Imperial? And if so, were any of them BAME? Um, let me have a think. Um, I feel like I know one other individual um, who came from Glasgow, but he was on aeronautical engineering course and he was a BAME student. Um, but to my best knowledge, um, I feel like I'm the only one I've encountered from Scotland so far. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Out of interest, like how how is that? Because um, obviously it's quite a big change from you coming from Scotland to London, it's quite a distance. Like how, how have you found that experience and like, you know, when it comes to going home or, you know, keeping in contact with friends and family? Um, at first it was very, um, it was just a completely new experience to me. Um, I usually fly home. Um, so the distance, you don't feel it too much when you use a plane because you know, it, the distance it, you spend maybe like three or four hours in total traveling. Um, but if you were to go by train or by bus, you probably feel the distance a lot more. Um, so for me, I'd usually go home, you know, at the end of every term. So Christmas, Easter, summer holidays, that's when I would go home. Um, I, at first I did miss home as I'm from Aberdeen, which is a very small city compared to London. And um, so it was, I did miss home a little bit, but I feel like the friends that I had that I made while I was in London um, and the connections that I made, you know, it helped me to calm down and just like, I felt like I had my own little family within London. So, and it, it wasn't too bad. Great, thanks Agogo. Hope I didn't put you too, too much on the spot there. No, it was fine. Okay. Um, and then a question for you both. So, you know, obviously um, this series is part of the Being Black in STEM series and we're running it to coincide with Black History Month. Um, I just wondered whether you kind of had any thoughts that you'd like to share on, you know, how important is it that sessions like these are run by Black students and for Black students? Um, yeah, I think it's very, very important that these sessions are run um, by Black students and for Black students, especially um, and so that they can see um, that they have individuals such as just like them who are striving um, at university. And also these sessions are very important because they're very interactive. It gives an opportunity for you to ask questions or even know our names. And then you can find us on social media channels in order to ask questions later on if you weren't able to get any questions in. And I think it's very, very important that we're doing these interactive sessions because they don't just see that, okay, students are going to these universities. They're also seeing how students are thriving in these universities. Exactly. exactly. And um, I would just add to that, like when I was applying for Imperial, I didn't really see anything, um, anything run by BAME students or black students. Um, so a lot of what I saw were students of just other um, races. So I feel like this is really, really good because for other people who are looking to apply to Imperial, they can see people who look like them at the university that they want to go to. 
yes, and also so that they're not worried that, okay, they would be the only one at these universities because I think um, now we've been able to show them that, okay, there's cultural societies where um, you have people who are from the same background as you at the university. Excellent. Thank you both. And um, actually on that, I'm mentioning social media. If people want to find out more about the ACS, where should they go? We've got pages on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook, but I'd say Instagram is the most um, interactive one. So you're able to see the opportunities that um, ACS provide, the different events that go on during, throughout the year. So it's Imperial College ACS. It's for yeah, Imperial College ACS. Great, thank you. And it, it might be too early to ask this, but um, I don't know whether you've done kind of any planning for this, but do you know what your plans are for um, Afragala for next year, if, if things are still going to be done remotely? Um, yeah, what are you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, um, I'm personally, I'm not quite sure. I know that they're still running some virtual rehearsals, um, mainly just to get people meeting each other because the rehearsals are a great way for people to socialise. Um, as far as the show, I'm not on the committee this year, so I'm not really sure what's going on with the actual show, but there are still um, virtual rehearsals going on. Um, yes, I'm not on the committee this year either, but um, I know that they're still running virtual rehearsals, which is also a very good opportunity for um because a lot of what we did at ACS was just through through Afrogala, so everyone getting to know each other and also socialising outside of academics. Cool. So follow ACS on social media to watch the space, find out more. Yes, perfect. Definitely. Cool. So we're coming to the end of our session. Um, so just as a reminder, this um, presentation and this session will be online on our YouTube channel afterwards. So if you want to come back and watch it again or share it with your friends, you can do that. And you can also find um, the rest of the webinars in the series as well. And if you do have any other questions, you know, feel free to drop a comment in, um, in the comment box on any of the videos and, and we'll get back to you um, if we can with an answer. Um, and then so, you know, finally, to say thank you so much, Rafia and Agogo, for your time today and for sharing your insight and your expertise. It was a really, really interesting presentation and, you know, really great to hear about that experience that you've had, you know, before you even started university to where you are now. So, you know, thank you very much for coming along and presenting today. You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you to everyone who's joined us and everyone who's asked questions. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.